Hi, welcome everybody to this month's episode of Cronin's Corner. I'm State Senator John Cronin. Today, I am pleased to be joined with my colleague in the legislature, Representative Michael Kushmerick, and uh, Amy and Tara from the Labor and Delivery Unit at Lemister Hospital. So, you know, today's episode is really about what's going on at Lemister Hospital, the proposed closure of the Labor and Delivery Unit, what we're doing as a community to respond, uh, and, and really why it's so vital and important that we work together to try to keep this essential service open. So, ladies, I'm so grateful for you joining us today. Um, one, I'm really grateful for the work that you do uh, you. To, to serve our community and have done for a number of years. And I was born at Lemister Hospital. I think every family in Fitchburg or Lemister or the greater, um, the greater North Central area has a really deep personal connection to the work you guys do. Um, and it's easy to uh, tell people why it's so important to sustain the services um, that, that you provide every day. But to, to get us started, could you talk a little bit about what a day in the labor and delivery unit is like, what your work is, and and why it's so vital for our community. Sure. Um, we see moms... And do you want to introduce yourself yeah, first? I'm sure. sorry. Um, <laughs> my name's Amy, Amy Gagnon. I'm a labor and delivery nurse at Lemonster Hospital. I've worked at the hospital, uh, been a registered nurse for 16 years. I've worked at the hospital for 12 years on the labor and delivery unit. Um, that's the unit that the hospital is planning on closing. Um, our job right now is to see moms in the community, both prenatally and postnatally and during delivery. Um, just between Thursday night and Friday night, we had four moms and that came in um, and delivered their babies within an hour of being on the unit. Um, none of these moms would have had time um, to make it to Worcester. Uh, my name is Tara Corey. I am also a nurse on the unit. I uh, was actually two born at Lemonster Hospital and I gave birth to both of my children there. I transitioned to the unit about three years ago when I found out I was expecting my second and I realized how much of an impact um, the unit nurses made on me becoming a mom and I just decided that's what I wanted to do and I wanted to leave an impact on the future moms and babies of this community. So this is just, um, it's heartbreaking. We see people from way out west past uh, Athol and to Ashby and we, we're serving more than just Lemonster and Fitchburg and that's, this is something that cuts deep and it's affecting a lot of people. And I think one of the things that, that concerns us <clears throat> so much is the barrier so many people have to transportation. Yes. Uh, and so to have a, cent a centrally located labor and delivery unit here mm -hmm. in North Worcester County yep. is really critical to deliver care and, and keep people safe, right, mm -hmm. and make sure they yep. have access to prenatal and postnatal care. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what that looks like on the ground in your work um, and, and what concerns you about people having to travel yeah. an hour or, um, or, or longer to, to access services? So right now there is currently a nationwide paramedic and EMT shortage. Um, so we will definitely, if this closure goes through, have uh, massive amounts of trouble with getting these mothers um, to UMass in time. Um, a lot of the times a mother will, will come in and be ready to deliver and there won't be time to put her on an ambulance and send her. The emergency room is going to end up doing the delivery with untrained staff, um, no equipment, um, not, nobody's not trained. Not sterile. Yeah, not sterile. Nobody's trained in neonatal resuscitation. It's currently just a recommendation. It's not a requirement. Um, and if you have a mom come in at 28 weeks ready to deliver, you're not going to have anybody there to help um, stabilize that baby. And that's when you want some pros around. Yeah, too, that's when right? you yeah. want some pros. And we also have a lot of um, patients come in via taxi or they're calling someone from their church because they're not actually even from this country and they don't have access to tr readily available transportation. Um, so they, we're, we get people of all um, different backgrounds mm -hmm. coming in and it's I don't know how someone would be able to wake someone up at 2 in the morning and have them drive them to Worcester um, at the drop of a hat so it's just it's scary. I was discussing with my son's pediatrician mm -hmm. the other day um, the real concern of not just the day of the big event of getting there for for the delivery yeah. but all the prenatal care that comes with mm -hmm. it right. and, and you spoke a little bit about you know your interactions with um, with those expecting mothers yeah you know, we're really concerned about the ability of ensuring that there's prenatal care and easy access to prenatal care 
and months one through nine uh, up until delivery. Can you talk a little bit about the impact that you're expecting to see through this closure of prenatal well, care? Well, currently the um, offices are still planning on staying open, um, but they're planning on doing all their deliveries at UMass. Um, and we do see a lot of problems if this goes through. If you have a mother come into the office um, and you hook her up to a monitor and she has a tracing that's not reactive, um, you ha she needs to go to a unit right away. There's not time to put her in an ambulance and give her a 30 minute ride to Worcester. And I think we do a lot of stress tests on the unit where yep. a mother um, isn't feeling the baby move quite as much today or was in a motor vehicle accident. They have to come to our unit and they have to be on, the, on our monitor and they have to make mm -hmm. sure everything's okay. So now that's a whole nother process. They're going to have to go to Worcester for that rather than just coming upstairs um, from the emergency room or from the office. So that's another issue we're going to see prenatally, I think. And I would think that you're going to see better outcomes when there's a continuity of care Correct. between prenatal, delivery, postnatal, Correct. right? And, that, and that's yeah. going to be disrupted. Yeah. yeah. And, and so you, your ability to, to interact as nurses with uh, these patients, you'll be stationed in, in Worcester in the labor and delivery unit. So your ability to interact with, with the folks who will then be coming in, you know, anywhere from three to, three to six months later yep. uh, or nine months later, uh, you won't actually have that ability. They won't, they won't build that comfort with you and, and you won't be yeah. able to, to really gauge in expectations <clears throat> too. Correct. Right, right now the, our patients are coming in sometimes weekly for an, um, non-stress tests. So we get to meet them throughout the prenatal period and then when they come in for their delivery we already know them. We know the families. They feel comfortable with us. Um, and then we'll continue um, to take caring them all the way through the postpartum period and assisting them with take, learning how to take care of a new baby and feeding the baby um, so that continuity of care will be gone. So I think, you know, to all of us, this is really disappointing and really upsetting. Mm -hmm. um, the day before Memorial Day weekend, uh, UMass Memorial and Dr. Eric Dixon, who is the CEO, filed a notice with the Department of Public Health uh, announcing the decision to close this unit. As elected officials and policymakers, we hadn't been consulted. We didn't know this was something that was under consideration. I think what is what is most troubling is that we take being good partners with UMass Memorial mm -hmm. really seriously because we want outstanding health care yeah. and essential services to be delivered and, yeah. and be stable here in our community. Mm -hmm. And just in the past two years, the state and the state legislature has appropriated more than $85 million to stabilize mm -hmm. UMass Memorial, uh, $27 million to UMass in November of 2022, and more than $6 million to Health Alliance right here in Lemonster. The explicit purpose of those funds was to stabilize and mm -hmm. maintain essential services in disproportionately uh, affected and economically disadvantaged yeah. areas like ours. Yeah. And so w we are looking into were those funds spent the right way. Um, and, and that is a process that, that, that we are taking on and that we are looking into in the legislature. But can you tell us more about when the process started to, um, that started the 120 day process, mm -hmm. what is going on right now? And can you help kind of educate the public on what the next couple of months looks like? Sure, um, the hospital gave a notice of closure uh, of 120 days. At 90 days, they have to submit a formal report to DPH. At 60 days before the date of closure, we're gonna have a public hearing with DPH. Nurses are gonna testify, doctors are gonna testify, patients are gonna testify as to why we should um, be keeping this unit open. So bringing a pregnancy to term, usually closer to about 270 days or right. so, right? Um, and so what about all of the, the newly expecting parents who were planning to have um, their delivery at Lemonster Hospital. What happened so, to them? So, what for instance, my, one of my cousins is she's actually a nurse at the hospital, and she's due in October for her third baby, um, and her babies tend to come pretty quickly. So she had an appointment the day, the Friday, the next morning after the the closure announcement, and she was told you can still see us for prenatal care, but you'll have to go to Worcester. And she was she was crying. She's like, I have to rethink everything. I've had my mm -hmm. two other babies there, and now I have to change everything I thought was going to happen. And she's due, I mean, a week after the expected closure. Um, so, and as as mothers, that would have shook me to my core. I mean, yeah. pregnancy is hard enough. It's scary enough. Mm -hmm. um, childbirth is scary enough, and 
the fact that you have to rethink everything you were planning to do, um, it's not fair. These moms were not given enough notice. That's not enough. It's And you it's delivered not. one of your, your kids on the Both of my so, kids, yeah. Right? Yep. Um, to, to step back from this situation, could you both just tell us why you love your jobs and why why you love um, working in the labor and delivery yeah, unit? Yeah, sure. I love being able to assist um, new moms and new dads um, in supporting them through the birthing process because it can be very scary. And I think a big part of it for me is I love educating and I love when the new the first time parents are asking all of the questions and they're mm -hmm. like I know this is a silly question and it's like no it's not it's important and you don't know and I love that I can leave an impact on your mm -hmm. life and on how you're raising your child and I think that is so rewarding for us as nurses to know just how many families we've touched in this community um, and it's just it's such a rewarding job we're so lucky we're at the beginning of life um, yes there's always some bad things mm -hmm. that can happen sure. but it's so nice but to you're be there for that too right? yeah, yeah. right yeah. and we are and we're trained to be there for that yeah. and we know how to handle that um, as opposed to maybe someone on a different in the emergency room or in the ambulance mm -hmm. wouldn't know so it's it's rough so I think there's been an incredible outpouring of support from mm -hmm. the community and and everybody it's important to everybody to keep the labor and delivery unit open because we know once we lose it we're never going to get it back right. mm -hmm. what is that outpouring of support from the community meant to you and and what can people do to um, help change UMass Memorial's mind because yeah. Dr. Eric <coughs> Dixon can rescind this closure and, yeah. and keep this this so uh, so we're open. asking um, all of the community to call Dr. Eric Dixon and ask that this closure be stopped. Um, we also, we had started a Facebook page called Leave Labor in Lemonster. We um, started it Sunday night and we've mm -hmm. had, I mean, it says we've reached 16,000 people already. Yep. Um, the greatest part of this is we are getting stories of when people delivered their babies, how they're so thankful for our unit. I've had um, people that delivered about 30 years ago commenting saying, um, I delivered within a few minutes of being on the floor. My baby was blue. The cord was around his neck, and here he is because of you. Yeah. And it's just so touching for us, and it's powerful that everyone is in support of us. Um, and we, we we are so thankful. I think the rally that you had hosted for us um, the following week was amazing. Yeah. It gave us the inspiration we needed to start this fight. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just we're hoping to keep keep the momentum up and keep going with it. And so the you guys are coming to the state house to, to mm -hmm. see us. And I know we are planning right. on. Um, I think one of the things that we are proud of in North Central is you know we mess with each other, but nobody really messes with us. Right. And, and as a yep. delegation, we're going to have a united front yep. testifying on legislation that would prevent things like this from happening in the future. Mm -hmm. But can you talk about you know what your message is going to be testifying at the state house and 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 what you hope that. Uh, other leaders can hear who who aren't affected yeah. by this or, or, or around um, yeah, the state. Yeah, so what my message is going to be is that basically everything is a blind promise. When they closed our pediatric unit, um, the hospital had promised they would create a pediatric observation unit in the emergency room for children to be seen as a um, promise um, to allow the closure to go through. That was never followed through. Nobody ever followed up on it. The hospital didn't get penalized in any way. Um, so we feel when we do go to DPH, they're going to tell us right away, this is an essential service and we, it needs to stay open for the community. Um, but right now, um, the hospital can basically do whatever they want unless we get this bill passed. We need to get this bill passed. There needs to be more power um, in DPH to be overseeing what is happening inside these hospitals. Yeah. Well, and that process has played out too before, and we know it all too well. And right. in Fitchburg, you know, we we had a whole hospital and an entire right. complex with in and outpatient services at Burbank. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, in the midst of a mental health crisis, they closed yeah. a mental health unit mm -hmm. when we knew there was a distinct lack of beds. Um, they, they closed a service that was desperately needed by the community. DPH ruled the sen the, the service to be essential. Uh, and they closed it anyways, and we saw that repeatedly throughout Fitchburg to the point where Burbank's campus mm -hmm. closed. Clinton Hospital has repeatedly lost mm -hmm. services, and just two years ago we saw it with what cardiopulmonary and, mm -hmm. and pediatrics at, um, at, at Lemonster. So we've seen repeatedly that the service as it's, the, the, the process as it uh, is currently situated uh, doesn't actually result in stopping those closures. Right, it doesn't, and that that is the thing I think was so surprising to us. 
because um, when you learn, we learned of this, we're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do something to stop uh, stop this. But there's really not much we can do. Um, DPH is going to say we need the service, and they 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 can't stop it. So our my testimony at the state house is going to be. Um, we need to change the course of healthcare in Massachusetts. It needs to change yeah. because this is going to keep happening. We've seen it multiple times in our little mm -hmm. hospital in the short mm -hmm. time we've been nurses, um, and we just need to change the future for for everyone. And I think it's so harmful to us as a, as a region. I mean, the the trend mm -hmm. is really consolidation, and the trend is losing essential services mm -hmm. one by one, tick by tick, from North County and North Central um, to Worcester, and mm -hmm. you know. We everybody says they believe in health equity, but you know health equity means public payers, Medicare, Medicaid, Mass Health uh, patients deserve access to mm -hmm. the same essential services yep. here that they do in in Worcester, or that they do in Boston, uh, and so I think it's disheartening. It's really troubling for mm -hmm. all of us to to see that continued loss of services. Well, there's a real expectation I think from your community hospital, right, a nonprofit yeah. organization. Mm -hmm to a commitment to the entirety of the community. The whole community, exactly. And then yeah. we know that down the street from this very studio, you know, whether it's on Elm Street or High Street or down in Clagon in Fitchburg, there are single mothers with two or three kids expecting mm -hmm. their next child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and trying to figure out, without a car, it's already been difficult to get yeah, to Lemonster. Right, How do yeah. I get to Worcester? Yeah. And, right. and what happens if I need that prenatal care along the way in Worcester and, and not in Lemonster? Right. Correct. Uh, and, I, and it's I, just not going to happen. It's, it's, it's not. not, it's not yeah. gonna happen. The mothers will make the they decision that they won't be getting I'll, prenatal I'll care, and that's going to lead to some pretty sad outcomes. So, uh, what are some of the risks for for not be having access to, to prenatal services? Or well, I th I mean, to not having access to prenatal 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 visits can catch so many different problems that can be helped ahead of delivery of your baby. Mm -hmm. um, high blood pressure, um, different things on the anatomy scan that might be wrong with the baby, so that when the day comes of childbirth, you're prepared. You know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. There's some sort of um, preparation, no matter what. And that, I mean, that if you're not getting prenatal care, that a lot of those things that could right. be prevented are not <clears throat> going to be prevented And a anymore. lot of these high-risk patients that we pick up on their prenatal visits will follow them closer throughout their pregnancy. Right. And these folks aren't gonna have access to that if the unit gets closed. So earlier we mentioned Dr. Dixon and his ability to overturn this mm -hmm. with the snap of a finger. You know, I find it so incredibly disingenuous that 30 days in, just for the first time, uh, he's reaching out to, uh, you know, the, the political leadership. Uh, never was there an indication, uh, is my understanding, in conversations with the Massachusetts Nurses Association and with your union no. and with your uh, unit. Uh, yet, there's been some indications all along, right, that they that this is the direction they wanted to move oh, in. Oh, yes, correct. correct. They've um, been purposely withholding jobs for probably over a year. <clears throat> um, I've been fighting with my manager to get um, my nurses on postpartum cross-trained, and um, they just have blatantly shut me down every single time. I managed to get one nurse trained. Um, had I managed to get everybody trained, um, we would be fully up and running and we wouldn't be relying on any agency nurses. And aside from the staffing issue, they're claiming um, low, lower birth, birth rate. rates. So one of the things we had... But our had, communities are growing here right, in Fitchburg and yeah. Lancaster. And we had started a while ago recognizing um, our lack of marketing for our unit. Yep. And we were trying to do things such as bring in new ideas. Um, UMass is big on a innovation board where they want the staff to be putting ideas up. and. I am the one that runs our innovation board and I was told by one of the people in that department that we have one of the most engaged idea innovation boards throughout the whole system. And I had myself written for a grant proposal to get queen size postpartum, postpartum mm -hmm. meds in for our patients because that is something that would draw people mm -hmm, in. Right. It's different and I got the grant approved a year ago and I have been fighting to get those beds ordered and get that going because that would be something we could market. Um, and it just never, I was fighting with I mean, we've had multiple managers mm -hmm. since then, but it just never came to fruition. And it's really hard for us that have been working so hard because we knew there was a problem. We wanted to bring in more more people to our hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and we have tried and tried and tried. And 
there's just always been someone up there not letting things happen. And those are the mm -hmm. two things that we've been told. There's, there's been serious workforce challenges and declining births in the hospital. <coughs> but I think, you know, both of those things we, we can be a little bit skeptic yeah. skeptical skeptical. Anything that they're telling you has been orchestrated by them. Right. And yes, I, w I would say birth numbers have gone down, like you said, but mm -hmm. we, I mean, but we're we still we, busy. There's a lot of births. Um, for people who live in North Central who are yeah. within the UMass system but are going to Whistler. Right, right. Um, and we could, I And mean, that wasn't always the case, right? right there right. were more people, and, it, and frankly, it's, it's more affluent people in our community yeah. who, who can go down to Worcester. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you mentioned there's been a seismic shift in the number of births yes, uh, at correct. Levenster Hospital yeah. from, from when you started to, to now. Can you talk a little bit yeah, about so that? Yeah, so probably about six years ago, um, we were doing cl over a thousand deliveries a year. Um, and then about five years ago, um, we dropped down to about a hundred deliveries a year. So I investigated a little bit, um, talked with the um, different patients, and they were being told that their insurance is no longer accepted at our hospital. They are now being told that they have to go and they have to deliver at St. V's. And a lot of these patients are um, Medicaid patients. I just want to say we've never been down to 100 a year, Oh, right? 500. 500. Sorry, right. 500. Yeah. Oh, that would be We low. went from 1,000 down to 500. Yeah. So we're currently doing about 500, a little bit over 500 a year. Um, but at the time, we were doing 1,000. But that's still a significant amount. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's days, last weekend there was eight new babies on our yeah. unit. It, I, I mean, that's pretty significant. Right. Absolutely. And it's a major population center here in, here in the state. Well, and, and we, you yeah. think of new families that, you know, whether they're aspiring new families and they're thinking about starting a family yeah. in the next couple of years, or, or those that are, uh, you know, continually growing um, the, the size of their family, they think about two things, right? They think about the quality of education, mm -hmm. and they think about the, the quality of health care in their mm -hmm. backyard. Mm -hmm. Where can I deliver and how quickly can I get to the hospital yeah. um, to ensure that my child uh, has access to health care? And they're taking one of those things away, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it speaks to a lar our larger issue in the health care system is that, you know, health care delivery is heavily publicly subsidized by taxpayers mm -hmm. through Medicaid, through Medicare, through our mass health system. Mm -hmm. Um, through things like, you know, we, we passed $350 million last right. November in our economic development package yeah. to stabilize services. Um, and so I think it's, it is a, it's like we are watching the system break in front of us, that taxpayers are, are, are stabilizing these essential services, but also that government has no mechanism to really hold these organizations accountable to deliver right. those services yeah. and, and to lean into health equity and make sure that disadvantaged areas of the state um, yep. have access to, to things like maternal health care mm -hmm. at a time when across the country we're moving in the wrong direction yeah. uh, for maternal health. Could, could you speak kind of, kind of you know, outside of North Central, but a across um, the country, what, you know, the, some of the challenges to maternal sure. health that, so, that we're, we're facing? Um, this is not only a problem in Lemonster, this is a problem across all of the United States. We're seeing hospitals shut down um, labor and delivery and psych units because of low Medicare um, reimbursement, I mean Medicaid reimbursement um, would be mass health for us. Um, we feel that's why we're purposely being targeted. targeted. A lot of the population that we see is um, poor people, lo low income right? um, yeah. and minorities and we feel like this is why this is happening to us. If it was elsewhere you wouldn't be seeing this happen. Um, these patients are now being told they have to go and deliver at UMass, they want to try and get them to be all under one unit um, because the reimbursement rate they're receiving at Lemonster is, is low. It's probably about $6,000 from soup to nuts for the whole delivery, whereas um, if somebody came in with Blue Cloth Blue Shield, it would be like $15,000 to $25,000 of reimbursement. Um, so their plan is really to funnel all these patients onto one unit um, and they have the high cost of the NICU to offset the low cost of the um, mass health patients. And our nurse association um, had posted recently a map of Massachusetts yeah. and it kind of shows the mater maternity mm -hmm. deserts um, and North Central Mass is in the red and it's scary. You see um, the North Shore in the Boston area, it's all looking good with the blue and then you see us and I mean it's, it's pet, it scares us as moms, mm -hmm. as nurses um, and that's just not the direction we should be heading. It's 2023. Let's let's move forward in healthcare, not backwards. I think yeah. one of the things that our, rep our our colleague Representative Kilcoyne says that is I, I think pretty poignant is um, you know I'm going to have less access to maternal health care than my yeah. mother did. Yeah, that's right. that was like uh, the most ago, shocking yeah. thing when I heard her say that. Yeah, that was it's so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's, how is this even happening? Like you can't even believe this is real. Right. <laughs> we, um, 
So there's been an incredible outpouring of support from the community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think everybody has reminded about how vital your work is and, and keep, how important it is mm -hmm. to keep this essential service in North Central Massachusetts, here in Lemonster. <laughs> For the people watching at home, what can our community do? What do we need people in our community to do over the next uh, two or three months um, to, to try so, to stop this so and to we, support you? Yeah, so we need um, people of the community to reach out to Eric Dixon and um, tell him to stop this closure because he has full power on doing that. We would also like people um, to sign your petition. We've um, started a Facebook page and we've tagged it to the top there. Um, and we have QR codes that we're going to be distributing throughout the community um, to restaurants, doctors' offices. Um, when people see them, just scan that QR code and you can sign the petition because we need to get this bill passed. And we need, um, so wa watching our Facebook page, we'll be sure to post all the media stuff, the media coverage of this to keep people updated regarding the hearing. Um, there's also a link on there if people want to get involved in different events we have coming, they can sign up that way. Um, so. And so to Dr. Dixon, you're, you know, who has yet to engage the delegation, mm -hmm. the, the municipal leaders like the mayors of Fitchburg and Lemonster and the, and the, and the, the town managers mm -hmm. of the surrounding communities, has, has yet to engage the nurses' unions. Mm -hmm. what, what is your message to the CEO of, of UMass Memorial? Um, he needs to come to the table with you guys and start a discussion. And he, ne he needs to come to our unit. Come yeah. see what we do. Come see who we're serving. Um, I don't, I, I mean, even our, the upper management within Health Alliance, I don't believe they've even come. I mean, the way we no. were told about the closure was just kind of a, We found out is. from another hospital, yeah. from our friends. Over text message, yeah. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, so it's just, no one's really come to the table for anyone. And, and I think it's a really reasonable ask to say, Come tell us what you need to stay open, mm -hmm, right. right? What yeah. you know, we just get, we just got the the UMass Memorial System thirty three million dollars mm -hmm. less than six months ago. Um, and what every other hospital in the right. region that has that has needed help, they've engaged us. They've right. asked us, yeah. you know, please, what can you do? They've engaged the federal partners, the state partners, and the local ones to ask for resources and, and none for help. And none of that has happened. Yet. And none of that happened. Yeah. Um, so. You can find the petition on my Facebook, on the Leave Labor and Delivery Facebook mm -hmm. page. Um, Councilor Sally Cragen is also uh, circulating printed petitions too, so if you don't have access, you can contact Councilor Cragen in, in Fitchburg as well. And what else are we going to be doing at the, at the State House moving forward, Mike? Yeah, so every uh, possible opportunity we're going to be ensuring that our colleagues in the legislature, whether they're in Provincetown or North Adams, uh, know about this, but also more importantly know about the, the proposed legislation uh, that, we're, that we're pushing um, to really ensure that essential service uh, determinations and closures cannot move forward uh, and that the Department yeah, of Public mm -hmm. Health has really serious teeth to be able to stop yeah. uh, these uh, and to, to force hospital and healthcare uh, organizations back to the table to ensure that these services are not lost in communities like ours. So we've got about a minute left and I want to give you both kind of the final word here. So what's at stake and why is it so important that, that we keep this um, essential service open in the region and, um, and, and what do you need from everybody in the community? Lives are at stake, a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I think that's why I'm most scared. It's scary, babies' lives and mothers' lives. How about you, Amy? Yeah, um, I agree, same thing. Um, lives are at stake, you know what I mean? We won't have the safety net in place that we have right now mm -hmm. um, to deliver people that need, their baby would need emergency resuscitation. There's not gonna be any skilled personnel available in the hospital. If somebody should come into the emergency room um, by ambulance, um, it's, it's gonna be frightening. We wanna make sure that personnel is there and that everybody's trained and ready to go. So we just really want everyone to share share your story, share your support, yeah. show up to our hearing. Um, it should be around the end of July. We're gonna have more rallies planned. More right? rallies. There will yeah. be an essential services hearing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna fill up the bus on the 20th with um, m and nurses um, and doctors. And community um, members. And community members, and we're all gonna be um, at the State House in support of this bill. Great. Well, I want to thank you both so much, uh, not just for the work you do every day for our community and the families that you serve and the young mothers and, and children, but for your adv advocacy here and really the courage to speak up and, and mm -hmm. uh, share what's going on on the ground because this is so important for us. And, it is, and, and, and thank you. Thank yeah, you for thank having you. us. Thank this you for is having great. us. We're yeah. glad that people are open to listening and 
willing to fight with us. And the fight goes on. So it that's it for this month, everybody. Um, again, please you know, look at our Facebook page, follow the uh, the nurses page, and get involved. We need your support to uh, to keep labor and delivery open in Fitchburg and Lemonster in the North County.